Okay, this video is going to be a how-to uh, for tuning a Hemi on speed density. The first thing is you're going to want to have your file open. You're going to want to have your scanner open. Uh, you're going to want to have uh, some sort of version of Excel open. You're going to want to go back to uh, your editor. The first thing you want to do is go to Airflow. Go to Neural Network, make sure Neural Network is disabled. Next, go to Speed Density, make sure VE Bank 2 disables at no. Set the VE Max at 200%. Next, you're going to want to go to Fuel. You are going to want to set deacceleration fuel cutoff to a temperature that the engine will not reach so it does not come on. You're going to want to go to Temperature Control and you're going to want to zero out the FA enrichment table so that way it will not dump fuel to try to change the temperature of your catalytic converter whether you have it or not. And that's all you need to do in the file before going over to the scanner. You want to open up the scanner. You are going to want to right click over here on graphs, go to graph layout. You're going to want to click this, which has the green plus sign to add a graph. Once you get to your graphs, you're going to want to create two graphs, one for bank one, one for bank two. Uh, it is your choice what parameter to use. I use long-term fuel trims plus short-term fuel trims. From there, you want to make sure you have a high value and a low value. You're going to want to go down here. You're going to want to set your parameter for the column to engine speed. You're going to want to set your row axis to pressure ratio. You're going to want to come back to the scanner. You're going to want to go back to the speed density. Go back to VE Bank 1. You're going to want to right click here. And that way you can copy the labels for the column. You're going to want to go back, paste them in the column. You're also going to want to go back to editor. You're going to want to right click here as well. Get the row access, copy the labels, go back, and you're going to want to put them down here. You're going to do that for both banks, bank one and bank two. Now, once you have your table, you're going to want to go over here to your channels, and you're going to want to right click, add a channel, and you're going to want to make sure that you have engine RPM and pressure ratio uh, both added to there, because it needs to be in your channels in order for HP tuners to scan for it because if it can't scan for it, it cannot populate your table over here. You're going to want to start the vehicle up and you're going to want to uh, drive it around. Now if you start it up and it's super crazy off and it barely runs, and let's say it's adding a ton of red right here, um, at that point you can grab that lower section of your VE table and just times it by 1.1, 1.2, whatever, and just try to get the fuel a little bit close before you drive it around. Once you start driving it around, you're going to want to stay under 4,000 RPMs and under 50% throttle. That way you're not putting your engine in any harm's way uh, because your power enrichment should actually be off. So go back to here and make sure under fuel that your power enrichment is turned off. You can turn off by changing the RPM to a high RPM that you cannot hit. That way it will not go into power enrichment mode. And make sure you save this as a new file so that way you can say you have the other file to show you what you did change. Go back to the scanner. Like I said, you're going to want to drive around. You're going to want to do hard pulls and light pulls all under 50% throttle on all under 4000 RPMs. Uh, once you're satisfied that you have a decent amount of population here on your chart, you are going to want to stop. You can turn the vehicle on. Right click here, copy all of this data. You're going to want to go to your Excel, Excel spreadsheet. You're going to paste all this data into Excel. Did not copy. One second here. Once you paste it in an Excel, you're going to want to come to this bottom corner and you're going to want to turn this to whatever the closest number is. So that's negative 6. You're going to want to come up here to the top of Q here 
and you're going to want to take and make all of these negative 6 all the way down. Now the reason we're doing this is we want this to be accurate so we don't want all this blank area because then you're going to have a lot of peaks in your BE table that are going to be inaccurate. So you're going to want to copy, you're going to paste this all the way over until you get to a spot where you can't go any farther, which is right here. So for here, we're going to pick the closest number to fill in. And then we'll split the difference here. And then go to negative 6 there. These are all negatives across here. So you're going to do the same thing all the way across. You're going to want to fill in all of this data for whatever numbers are close. So in here you're going to want to probably just do 20s all the way through here. here in this corner I would only do 20s as well you don't need to go all the way up to the 40s but you want to fill all this data in here once this data is filled in here you're gonna want and you're gonna have to do this for both banks you're gonna want to copy this you're gonna want to go back to editor you're gonna want to go back to your VE table so for bank one and you want to paste special multiply by half now, when you do do this, when it's crazy high like that, like there was anywhere from 20 to 40 percent changes, only do it for bank one. Copy bank one, paste it over to bank two. Now, do that a couple times till things start getting close. Once they start getting close, then do bank one and bank two separate, and continue to try to populate all of this data, whether you got to add the numbers yourself or not, until it starts getting close. Once it gets close, you don't have to add numbers in this area here, this area here, these other areas where you can't hit. It's not going to always be completely smooth. You can see mine's decently smooth here. It's not always going to be like this. Uh, you can smooth out the transitions, but it doesn't need to be a perfect slope because your engine might not always want that. Once you get your tables exactly where you want them, you're going to want to go back in and you're going to want to turn the power enrichment back on. If you have cats, you're going to want to turn the cat, the FA enrichment back on. You're going to want to turn the deacceleration fuel cutoff back on. Uh, the only thing you're not going to change is you're going to leave the neural network off. There's no reason for the neural network to come back on after everything's dialed in properly. Uh, so that basically start to finish is about as simple as you can get to tune these uh, volumetric efficiency tables on the Hemis. Um, so please subscribe and if you have any questions feel free to message me for um, I guess answers or anything else you might need.